Peloton has a reputation for being a very hard uh, uh, cardio act, obviously a very hard physical cardio activity, anaerobic cardio. And but I, here's what I told her because I was I kind of stuck my head, you know, I kind of dug in my heels on that and said, I don't think you understand how much bike riding I've done in my life. I can do a bike ride and dial it down. There are, you know, every, every ride doesn't have to be an interval ride. There is such thing as a recovery or a, or a low impact ride is what, is what Peloton calls them. Uh, I can do a much lower impact ride. It's the equivalent of a mile or a mile and a half walking around the block. And I will agree to dial it down. So that's what I did, but I just want to stress that my weight loss was based on nutrition. It wasn't based on exercise. I am exercising at a much higher level now that I've lost 63 pounds. I weigh 179. I weigh five pounds more than when I graduated from high school, wow. which was way beyond any goal that I had set. I never in my life imagined. I, I've spent my, my whole life, I've been above 200 pounds, my adult life, excuse me. My entire adult life, I've been above 200 pounds, most of the time, way above 200 pounds. It's more than just your output, more than a bike. When you hear your shout out, you know it's all right. Put on your magic pants and let's go. Welcome to the Clip Out, episode 178. This is Crystal O'Keefe. And this is Tom O'Keefe, now that I'm ready. You I sure? screwed everything up. You didn't screw it up. I put on my headphones, I had no audio of any kind. And um, it makes it a little hard to communicate. <laughs> yeah, you need to be able to hear me. Although, it's probably not that different than any other night watching TV. Dang. <laughs> Shots fired, man. I'm going to need a break. <laughs> Knock the wind out of me. That's... Goodness, and I'm 50. I can't do that to a, to a I'm in a, a 50 year old. Should be ashamed. Res- I'm not. More respect for the elderly. Okay. So uh, I guess uh, you know what we should talk about is our the pink Peloton we're giving away real quick. We do we dig need in. to talk about that. Yeah. Uh, so we are giving away a brand new, customized. Pink Peloton. One of a kind Pink Peloton. We partnered up with the National Breast Cancer Foundation because, as you know, October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Yes. And we wanted to make, we wanted to do a little thing to help out. So uh, if you go to theclipout.com slash pink, you can, uh, there is a way to enter for free, but you can also throw a little money at uh, National Breast Cancer Foundation's uh, way. Yes. And helps them out. You can get entries for as little as five bucks like yeah, 10 entries for five dollars yeah. so it's uh it's not like you know we we really jacked up the price but yeah. i will say the more that you donate the more entries you the more get chances you have to win now you might be saying to yourself self i i already have a bike i already have a bike but you don't have a pink one and, and I'm sure you know somebody who right. doesn't have a bike you've got somebody in your life that you've been like oh man they've been I they, wish so and so had a bike. Right. I wish if, they could ride with me. And if you want it, here's your chance. Here's your chance. <laughs> and all of the proceeds over and above the cost of the bike go to the National Breast Cancer Foundation. Or let's say, ladies, you <laughs> bought yourself a Peloton and now your husband. He's just sweating all over it. He's gotten all handsy with it. He doesn't put the seat back. Now, just like the toilet. And so here's what you do if you win it. <laughs> You make him ride the pink one. <laughs> also, there's some of you out there that don't like pink. If you really, really hate pink, you could take the stickers off. It peels off. It, it can be returned yeah. to its original color. We just thought it was cool. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> so anyway, and also, uh, if, if you've if you've already given, thank you. If you want to do something yes. to help and, and you've already given, you're like, I gave, what more can I do? Or if you just don't have the means right now yeah, and you still want to totally. help out, share it on your Facebook timeline or Twitter, Instagram, what have you, Friendster, if you're like 150. Right. Um, yes, please share. All those different outlets and just link people back to theclipout.com slash pink yes so now that we've gotten that all out of the way what do you have in store for people this week well we we're going to talk a lot about uh stocks and what's going on with peloton and uh john mills is going to join us for that um we've got a we've got some interesting foley in the news okay we're going to talk to him and uh there's some there's some fun stuff that's coming to peloton we're going to talk about as well as 
Peloton being in the news. There were some interesting news articles this there week. There were some interesting, not your kind of typical fluff pieces, <laughs> but some some different things out there. Yeah. So before we get to all that, shameless plugs, don't forget, we are available available on Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, iHeart, wherever. Um, while you're there, be sure and subscribe so you never miss an episode. Maybe if you would be so kind, you could leave us a review. Please. Just a little way for people to come along after you to know whether or not we're worth your worth their time. We have a new review. Yay! This is from Ikester24. Ikester, okay. A- and I'm going to assume it's a guy because it says Ike, but sure. it doesn't have to be. Sure. But uh, it says, a must listen. Aw. My Friday wouldn't be complete without least listening to the latest offering of all things Peloton. Crystal and Tom's witty banter and incredible news updates keep things flowing nicely. I feel like I don't miss anything important and have a jump on new things that are coming. Please keep up the good work and thanks for all you do. So thank you. Well, thank you for the very nice review. Absolutely. So sweet. Yeah. And also, don't forget, if you want to stay up to date on things throughout the week, facebook.com slash the clip out. While you're there, like the page, join the group. You can sign up for our newsletter that comes out weekly-ish. At, I forgot again this She week. forgot again. Oh. At theclipout.com. <laughs> so I believe that's everything. Let's uh, let's dig in, shall we? Sure. Peloton stock ticker. So uh, joining us again to talk about uh, some Peloton money-related stuff is John Mills. Hey, John, how's it going? Doing well. How's it going? I bet you're doing well. $135 <laughs> a share. Do you see that? Every time I see it go up, I go, I sell. I feel like I'm on, you know, you know, that Eddie Murphy movie. I'm <laughs> trading places. Sell. sell. But I, do. <laughs> I know. I, just I, real quick. Has the ending of that movie ever made a lick of sense to anybody? Like, no. I love that movie. But when they start going on about orange juice futures and and they're gonna sell short and then they're buying up and then they're i'm just like what the holy hell is happening i have no idea i, I don't remember think. do you guys remember that you remember the details of that movie oh man <laughs> i've seen trading places i bet you 25 or 30 times right i don't right. remember any details in oh movie. my god <laughs> i remember very few movies that's that how one I, I remember yeah i haven't seen that a that's lot. oh yeah now the fifth element i can quote Verbatim. No, I can do that with Trading Places. Like you can do that I with was a in lot Vietnam. of movies. My name was Agent Orange. Maybe you remember me. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, keep I'm gonna down. rein you in again, Tom. <laughs> keep it down. My neighbors work for a living. Oh my god, such a good movie. Such a good movie. <laughs> wow. So uh, yeah, one thirty five. Now it's it's gone back down, but we hit another. We're at one thirty one. It looks like after hours trading. But it, yeah, yeah, closed at one one thirty one forty four somewhere around there. Yeah, yeah, I'm excited about it. I mean, it, it was a down day. Nasdaq was down. It and it still kind of ended up. Yeah. So I mean, I'm good with that. I'm good with the momentum. I'm good with it's what it's doing. I mean, the fundamentals are all good. There's all kinds of good news. Yeah. I, I mean, we're kind of hearing. From different places about you know what's going on with the bikes coming in on those shipments and yeah so so tell us about that so you had you saw that there were um, I saw on your page that you posted an article that there you know you kind of gave a little background about Rexon so I'll let I'll let you talk you do that <laughs> well, well well I mean I'm just trying to piece together these pieces yeah, right yeah definitely That's not what I do it paints a picture that may or may not be a, the right picture but it's <laughs> my picture we have to put the uh, disclaimer up we don't we don't know um, we're just we're just talking right right <laughs> right so so we know that one of their manufacturers Rexon went to 24 hour production back in July like okay. we know that right. right right we also know well based on what we heard from Justin Post of B of A, we know that website visits are up 200% in at, the month of September was up 200% from December, from September of 2019. Wow. Wow. So you can, I mean, what, what you can take from that based on, you know, visits and as it relates to purchases, you know, is up to your own mind, but you know, there are more people visiting the website. And then we also know from Justin Post that the delivery backlog is still around four to eight weeks, even though they're producing more bikes. So all of that kind of makes you think that demand is high, stuff is happening. Then you add to that 
this this uh, this news feature on CNBC where they're out at the port of L.A. and they're talking about imports coming in and they show that there are 38 of these containers that came in last Wednesday from China for Peloton all in that one day. Just one and day. Just in one day. And last month, that would have been a, a third of the containers for the entire month. And they got that in a day. Wow. They got that in one day. Wow. Do, so do we have any insight when you say that like uh, that bikes are delivery delays for four to eight weeks? Are, are we talking bikes or bike pluses or do we even know? Well, Justin Post stated bikes and he didn't specify between bikes or bike pluses. Right. He just, he just said bikes. Gotcha. So they probably that probably doesn't mean much of it. Like if, I feel if, like it's bike pluses. I feel like it's both because I just feel like like if this was Apple and they were talking about iPhones, they wouldn't say, oh, it, containers of iPhone Max Pros. They'd say, you know, iPhones. Right. <laughs> that that makes me giggle because you only know that's a thing because, because we've been you. talking about Apple the last yes. couple of days around the house. We'll get to that later. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, all the stuff looks like everything's. Up. Also, we know that Rexon reported that they hit a, a earnings record in July, and then they reset that record in August, and then they're, they're anticipating they're going to break that record again in September. So we know that too. Like, wow. so I'm piecing all these things together, right? Yeah. And, yeah. and and your conclusion from putting all those things together is that this earnings call that's likely to be well they haven't they haven't told us when the earnings call is going to be but the expectation is probably going to be you know early next month my conclusion is that you know it's going to be another you know kind of breakout you know we're going to be we're going to be out kind of announcement that beats all the street estimates it's probably going to be better than what um what they said their expectations were you know so what that means for the market whether, you know, whether or not we get like a run up leading up and then, you know, we don't get much after. I don't know what that's going to mean from the market, but it tells me they're likely to beat the street estimate. Well, and there was another article that came out from uh, CNBC from Truist. I don't know what that is, but I guess they're important. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, Truist Security. So another financial firm. So they upped their price target at the same time. So did Barclays. They upped their their price target as well, which I mean. I mean, they've they've had it sitting at you know low one teens for a while, and we're past that. And so, well, yeah, I remember, I, mean, I remember just before the last earnings report, it was like one oh five, and I was like, no way, that's because they said one oh five next year, and I was right. like, oh no no no, we're gonna hit one oh five long before that, and we did, and then we just just flew right on past it. Yeah. <laughs> we having just it waved in the background. Having it sit at 115 right now is like when you ask Google what the weather is and it's like, it's 65 degrees. Or you're like, the high is going to be 65. Well, currently, it's, it's 67. 65. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly, exactly what it's like. <laughs> so I'm, I'm expecting like now that all these little fundamental things are coming out, all these little nuggets of information, I suspect leading up to earnings that we're probably going to get you know other firms uh, upping their price target, you know. So this, these were just two recent ones, Truist and Barclays. Sure. And then uh, on the on the heels of that, a website called Seeking Alpha, which sounds a little dirty. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> um, I was like, I was, when well, she, you would be very disappointed if you went to go look around there. Yeah. Just when so you, you know, when you sent me this link, I was like, did she mean to send me this link? Like, what is what is going well, on? Mean to send yeah. me that, right? I need to put you up. I mean, so that one was that one, that that article just you know, struck that one was close to my heart. Yeah. So for the people that can't see the screen right now, uh, it talks about with Peloton that you should wait for it to to crash and then scoop it up because i guess long term they they really dig it <laughs> yeah <laughs> they dig yeah it. it starts out kind of telling you that story but but ultimately well i'll start by saying erica is this huge movie fanatic i mean like crazy fanatic so back in um the late 90s when netflix came out she was like them early adopters. She, you know, she was she was all into Netflix. And she told me when they went public, you need to invest. And I said, yeah, whatever. Who DVDs in the mail? <laughs> like, really? 
right? So, <laughs> so, so she reminds me of that. Sure. Often. Yeah. And, and really the synopsis of this particular article is in the end, it's going, you may not want to be that person that's similar to what happened with Amazon and Netflix. Y- you said similar things with Peloton and then you're John Mills, basically. Right. You're John <laughs> Did it have it right. in parentheses, John Mills? Like, right. <laughs> we're talking and then to you. You're John Mills. <laughs> you know, real quick, to Netflix story when I was in radio, the, uh, we would give away prizes all the time. I was a promotions director. People would call and pitch me on prizes, and I had somebody wanting to give away a DVD membership to Netflix. And I was just like, not enough of our listeners have DVD players. This is like 1998, 1999, right. maybe. Right. And, the, and the guy's like, you know what? We're we're pushing this so hard. Like if if you will talk about this on your radio station, I will personally give you a free Netflix subscription for the rest of your life. Oh, and I'm just like, <laughs> you know, Reed. I just I don't know that I have a need for it. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> So they should have mentioned you in the article as well. Yeah, no, right? They should have. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh, oh now I feel. Well, you know, I mean, Erica. I mean, again, she was like this huge fanatic. So, I mean, I'm I'm in the movies, but like like I've got too much energy. So like I don't know how to spend. We've never noticed. <laughs> right. So yeah, right. It's not noticeable. You're so right? sedate on camera. Right. I don't understand. Yeah, so I- I don't get it, but I don't, I, I, I'll watch five, 10 minutes and I'll be on to something else. Then I'll come back. And when I come back, my mind comes back to the movie. And you're like, what then happened? I'm asking her question. Oh yeah, my God. What happened? Why is you're like guy? my mother. My mother <laughs> would do that. Like, I swear right. to God, I could be two and a half hours into Gandhi and she'd walk in and sit down and be like, why isn't that man eating? <laughs> I'm like, what? Mom, it's the, What? <laughs> You can't do that. You can't do that. <laughs> That's me. That's, it's always been me. And so she's just come to a place where she, I'm not even allowed to watch movies with her. Please let me. I mean, but it's fun to me to ask questions. You got to talk about what's happening. We're, like, we're having a conversation. We're spending time. Yeah. She, you got to. No, you got to no. pause for that, John. You can't. You can't. Because right, yeah. now that you're missing she, important points. There's things yeah. that are happening you don't know. You got you got yeah. to pause. <laughs> well, and then that, and she does like she does like if I ask she pauses, but then she's really upset. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, oh, no, that's really there good. are there are friendly pauses and right. there are aggressive pauses. <laughs> There's the right. pause where you're like, what? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Do you get that? <laughs> oh, what's funny? Well, no, what's, it's funny about Erica. Like, it, it it doesn't click into her, her mind initially that. She should be pissed off about this. So she pauses. She always does the same thing. She pauses and she starts answering my question. But by the end of the answer, it's like she's escalating. Now she's just upset. By the end, I'm answering this question. Like, then she's upset. Right? I get it. I'm on her side, man. I know you don't want to hear that, but... And let Erica know that if she's looking for a podcast about movies... We should we should totally have Erica on the other podcast to talk oh, about oh, movies. Oh there my is God. no movie. There is no movie Erica hadn't seen. Me and Jasmine, <laughs> literally, we make fun about this all the time. We'll come home and she's watching movies with subtitles. I mean, she doesn't even understand the language. She's reading the movie. Like I, we don't get it, but like she's pro- Erica's another level. <laughs> she's probably watching movies with subtitles just to stop you from asking questions. <laughs> She's like, she knows you're gonna walk in, see the subtitles, and be like, "Don't no, care, not interested." Hard pass. Hard it's a, pass. It's a defense mechanism. Yeah. <laughs> it's an Maybe ant- that might be right. <laughs> yeah, he's another level. He's a whole other level it's, of movie watcher. You know, it's, it's really not. next level when she starts watching movies that are in English, but turns on the closed captioning just to trick you <laughs> into thinking it's a foreign. Like you walk and you see the titles, you don't even listen. You're like, "I'm out." <laughs> And she gets about, she gets her movies to herself. It. Oh yeah, my gosh, that's pretty clever. So we should probably also uh, point out real quickly. Uh, you had uh, posted an article from the New York Times uh, that that John Foley was mentioned in about uh, the return of family dinner. 
Yeah. Yes. I wanted I wanted you to talk about your questions that you posed because oh. because I thought it was interesting your your take on it. And I don't I don't necessarily disagree. It just didn't occur to me. Yeah. <laughs> so. I, I thought it was a wonderful intended article and I thought the concept of it was wonderful. Basically that COVID has occurred and now because of it, a lot of us are working at home. And prior to that, we were working and running and hustling and bustling. And maybe you didn't have as much time to spend with your kids or with the family. Maybe you're not eating at the dinner table anymore. Now this has forced us all to have more time together. And if you have young kids, you have more time with young kids and it's all, it's all gravy. That that's really the intent of the article. So it's a very positive article. But I, when I read it, I thought, is there someone that's going to take offense to convert? Because with all CEOs they interviewed in here, take offense to an interview with a CEO talking about how nice it's been since COVID. Like the concept made me go, I, I don't know. I'm not sure. So I, so I <laughs> yeah, asked the I, question in my group, knowing that like it probably is, wasn't a good idea, maybe. <laughs> I, but I get what you're I saying. Something? But I there's also know. just the kind of the upside of you know, of uh, or just the angle of like making lemonade from lemons and right. like what you know, trying to find a bright spot and all right. this. But it is also when in the first paragraph, by then their nanny had already fed and gotten their two children <laughs> ready for bed. And I'm like, right. I'm glad but, I'm not the only one that has like, oh, that nanny. I, when I read that, I thought the same thing. You know, my mind is all focused on the stock, so I'm remembering the commercial that came out that I understood back late last year. Yeah. But then the whole internet went crazy. Like, what? And then the boyfriend gave her a bike, and then I went, "Oh, wow! Well, I guess you could take it like that." And then all of a sudden, it went all crazy. Yeah. So when I saw this, I thought, "Is someone gonna run with this? <laughs> right? Is this about to go somewhere? I guess not." Well, so we're not it, trying to. I, no. it also, I mean, it, it also makes sense. As somebody, a CEO at that level, his time is so valuable that right. you 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 bring in assistance, so you have yeah. more time to to right. to I focus mean, on and on what a thirty two billion dollar valued company. Like, I mean, we we yeah. there's a lot of things that he needs to to focus on with Peloton, and it's been you know they've been growing so fast that you can you can understand that they spend right. so much of their time at work i totally i totally get what you're saying i can also like it's it's really he lives in a different world you know and and it's not it's not his fault that he lives in a different world and and we're we're benefiting from that world you know but but uh yeah it's it's different it's like the people that like don't even know how much gas costs because somebody does that for them like they get their right, gas and right. their car like they just don't even have a clue yeah and right. um it's not that they're bad people at all right. you know but they just we're just we're just living in a different world. We have different right. challenges, and and there are right. people that have different challenges than like the four of us have. You know, like I'm including Erica in that conversation. You know, right. um, so it's but but I can see your point. You know, is somebody right. gonna to is be offended by that? I I think it's a right. fair question. I mean, and then yeah. you align that to a, a unemployment spiked. Now it's kind of back down to around eight percent, but it had spiked during the same time. So some people aren't at home with a job some yeah. people are at home without a job right right so you add that to it and then you you, you align that to the, the poverty rate has gone up so even if you even if you do have the job there's people that are making less now so they're at home with less money so then yeah. you add that to the equation right so those were the perspectives my mind was coming from and then my own experience like you know uh, late 70s, early 80s, my parents lost their job. Right? right. Okay. And then it didn't go so well. Then they right. divorced. And then oh. and my mom was, you know, struggling. And she, she just was telling us, go outside. Yeah. Like, it wasn't like we were spending a lot of time, right? I mean, <laughs> it, it wasn't a, it wasn't the, 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 the picture that's painted in that article. Right. Sure, sure. Right. Sure. So I started thinking of it from that perspective. How many people are reading it with that kind of, you know, experience. Sure. Yeah. I mean, those are very yeah. valid points. I see about when my parents got divorced, they both owned a printing company and then my parents got divorced and then my dad started a different printing company. Dun, dun, dun. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like War of the Roses. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, you know, I just, I just, I mean, we all you know come up with our own life experiences. Sure, totally. We all kind of drive kind of how we view some of this news, and I was seeing it through that lens. Where yeah. everyone who responded in in the article, though, they seemed to be seeing it through a completely different lens, which I think was a positive. That was a good thing. But I will also say you have self-selected in your group and in our group that, you know, it's it's very positive, Peloton positive people. And I think by and large, everybody felt the same about the Christmas commercial or the holiday commercial that came out last year. But, you know. It's still, it's still got a ride. Right. It went awry because yeah. not everybody is Peloton positive. It, 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 can, it might come across as a little tone deaf for some people, but at the same time, I, I can't exactly cr- clutch my pearls because a newly minted billionaire has a nanny. You know what I mean? Like, that's like. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's true I mean, that's, too. Yeah, that's, that's true too. Put it in one perspective. Of the, one of the perks of being a billionaire is you, they, <laughs> issue, you, they issue you a nanny and a monocle. <laughs> Michael. <laughs> right, I th- and then you get to pick from either a top hat or a cane, but you can't you not don't both. Get both. One or the other, and if you want the other, that's extra. But oh, okay. but you and have it because you're billionaire. Either- Right. Are you really even a billionaire? Right. right. I don't, I'm now, not even sure if you are. Tom, I'd like to know how you know so much about this. I just this. read a lot. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I thought maybe you were hiding something. Yeah, I'm a secret billionaire. Do you see any nannies around here? No, but see I... See any monocles? Maybe you have a secret life I don't know about. You and hear I've, about that sometimes? I've said before, I can't... If I wore a top hat and a and had a cane, <laughs> people would think I was trying to poison Gotham's water <laughs> supply. <laughs> I'd look like the penguin. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. Can't pull that off. I wonder sometimes if Tom has a separate life, but not in that sense, like on the leaderboard. Because sometimes <laughs> I'll see names that kind of relate, like it'll be like T O'Keefe or, oh. or, or Tom O or something like that. No. And I always go, hmm. is that? no, but there is there is a faker out there who uh, calls themselves Clip Out Tom. Yeah, he's not real. It's fake news. Real? It's fake news. No. That's fake news. That's fake news. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would have believed it had I seen it. I'm no. glad you got. You should not. <laughs> no. So. Okay. Well, thank you. <laughs> well, thank you so much for joining us again this week. Before yes, you, you go, uh, t- let everybody know where they can find you. Um, you can find me in my Facebook group or page, Run, Lift, and Live. You can find me on Instagram, Run, Run Lift, and Live, or you can find me at runliftandlive.com. Thank awesome. you so thank much. Awesome. Thank you so much. Always good seeing you guys. Likewise. Good to see you, too. Talk to you later. So this is kind of fun. It is. Uh, Peloton has created a bunch of Peloton specific gifts for people in the Giphy store. Yes, they have. Is that what they call it? Do they call it a store? I don't. Giphy. I don't. <laughs> it's it's coming. It's a Giphy in website. Giphy web. Giphy dot com. Yeah. But that. G i p h y. Just helping people out. But it's a lot of fun. It is. I love it. And there's some for each instructor. Plus, as you can see, if you're watching on the YouTube channel, you can see that they have like the special little features, like their additions, like Sundays with Love is right right up on top. Um, so that's really fun. I wonder if they're going to do one for the new um, Broadway series we'll be talking about later. Hmm. I don't know. That'd be kind of fun. It would. Yeah. But they have all sorts of different things there. So if you go to... Go to Giphy, you can find it. Or does Giphy, is that what feeds into like the GIF yes. selector yes. in Facebook and on your Twitter and it all does. that stuff? I don't exactly understand the mechanism. Like, I can't tell you how they get over there. Like, I don't know if they have a like a partnership right. or, you know, if only certain ones show up. I, I don't know. But um, but yes, that is what feeds them and the ones on Instagram as well. And then there are some new category breakdowns. Yeah. So on the app, well, I guess probably on the bike, too. I haven't actually looked, you know, the bike or the tread. Sure. Um, But they're broken down in the same way in both places. But now they've added all these different breakdowns. So um, for strength, yoga and music. So now for music, you can see the themes separated out from music. It used to just be that like it was themed. And so that's where you had to go to like look for, I don't know. Dua Lipa. I, can't, I couldn't think of a musical artist. Okay. And that's the one you went to. I, I don't know. Okay. I just like my mind was just a giant blank sure. and I had nothing like nothing. I was picturing people, but I'm getting old and I couldn't think of names as I was picturing them in my head. <laughs> and then I thought of Dua Lipa. I couldn't picture her, though. So yeah. I don't even know. Okay. <laughs> I'm just, I would never have guessed that. I, that would have been where you went. So, okay. Fair <laughs> Surprise. enough. Surprise. Yeah. 
But now it's broken out so that you can look under music or themes. So, for example, this new Broadway theme that's going to be out there, that will be separate from the, the just music, which is nice because if you wanted to go to 80s or you wanted to go to, I don't know, if they're doing something about circuses or something, right. you could look just under the themes. Okay. Um, but also they added they added some to yoga too and people were super excited about the fact that now you can you can filter on slow flow classes in yoga and that's kind of the more gentle like traditional yoga that you would think of when you're picturing yoga okay not like death metal yoga right okay well there is actually a power yoga is there there really is okay it, it's not set to death metal traditionally not saying that peloton could not make that happen sure um but <laughs> i bet you the rights on that are is are really cheap you think yeah it's very <laughs> affordable compared to like madonna and prince well they'll have to look into that yeah yeah um but until then, uh, now you can look up yoga in different ways than you could before, as well as strength. Now the strength is broken down by body parts. So you can see where, you you know, your classes that focus on chest or back versus before it was like kind of just, you know, figure it out by the title as you scroll through. Gotcha. So this is super helpful for people that are wanting to plan out their workouts in advance or hopping on and quickly finding something. Huge help. Awesome. And then there's uh, a, a little uh, discovery about the skip intro feature. Yeah. Apparently now that it's rolled out to more people because they're still in the process of doing this. Right. I have no idea how I got lucky to be at the top of these lists that are coming out, but I'm really glad I am. Um, but the uh, skip intro feature that we talked about now it has a little note that comes up next to it when you when you log on for the very first time it's on your bike and it says um you can only enable it after you've taken five classes in that discipline so for example let's say you've never taken a running class okay it won't show up it's only going to show up after you've taken five running classes that way you know the drill you know that you need to make sure your shoes are double knotted or your trainers, if you're Beck, Beck's Gentry. Um, <laughs> and, and little things like that that they say every single time. It's kind of like the the making you read the terms and conditions before you click, yes, I read the terms and conditions. Yeah, and, it, and I really, I think it's nice that they do that with the five because if you've never used your bike or tread before, um, then you need to know forward is to make it go faster <laughs> and and backwards is to make it go Abs- slower. Like those are important things Absolutely, to know. I think that's really smart. Yeah. And then and we've had some people ask about or we've seen some people ask about if the skip intro feature will be added to a live class and yeah. that um that's called time travel yeah we can't yeah, do that guys like that's, no we're yeah. not we have not figured <laughs> out how to make back to the future a real thing but when we do yeah we would not be in 2020 f no we would not <laughs> oh my god 2020 <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, Peloton is ending its the ability to use cadence sensors yes. via Bluetooth for new users. Now, I don't know what that means. So a cadence sensor is simply how fast you go. And there was an ability to, uh, if you were an app user, to be able to be on a different bike. It's not Peloton. Okay. Put on a cadence sensor and therefore you could be riding a different bike and you could pick it up from the app and be able to see like how fast you were going so when they say do 100 you can see so it was a way to kind of it was like a life hack of sorts like you don't have the official peloton bike you're using the app on a third party bike this is a way to kind of get one of the metrics that the bike has baked in exactly and so now they're 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 pulling that back they are. Um, so, uh, if you've been a, if you were a member before this is cutting off, which is October thirteenth, then you'll get to use it for another six months. So you'd be able to use it until approximately June. I think that's when I, I think that's what it said. Okay. Um, and then if if you've never used it before and you're a new person, you won't ever be able to hook it up. Like it's going to stop for gotcha. new users uh, right away. So um, I did hear from an employee. Um, I asked them, and it's an anonymous employee, so we're not going to. 
we don't want to get them in trouble. Okay. Um, but uh, they kind of felt like this was more of a business decision than a technical decision. Yeah. And that they wanted to do this to differentiate the bike from the app, which makes total sense. But it was nice to hear from an employee perspective instead right. of the rest of us just kind of guessing. Totally. So. And I get it. Yeah. I mean, they want to sell bikes. Like, they, hey. they do. And, and um, you know, I wish I had thought of this when, when John was on. Uh, we were talking to John. But I, I saw him mention that he he said he thought that it might have to do with Apple Plus Fitness. You know, that maybe maybe their fitness thing is like kind of forcing Peloton to do some things to differentiate the difference between their hardware and their software. Gotcha. So another interesting thought. Yeah, absolutely. And then shifting gears, uh, Tonal mm-hmm. added group workouts this week. Yeah, very cool. It's a it's a virtual workout, so it's not like a live class. But what you do is you can log on with your friends at the same time, so you all take the workout at the same time, and okay. you can see how they're progressing through their their different reps that they're doing. And if they get a PR or something, you get a little badge showing that. Uh, I think my favorite part is when you give them a high five. Yes, they have high fives. <laughs> but it's like it makes the high five sound like. In oh, the that's back. cool. <laughs> that's so cool. <laughs> it takes so little I to know. excite you, which works to my benefit more often than not. Uh, it's a lot of fun, though. I did my first one yesterday with like seven other people from the tonal community, and it was a blast. Well, it made the cool. time go by. Like 30 minutes felt like 10. It was so fast. And you don't have to wait for them since it's virtual. Like they can be doing theirs while you're doing yours. You're you- all doing it at the same time. Right. But like as soon as everybody has done the reps from that exercise like that specific move it moves you to the next one so like let's say you're doing i don't know step ups when you're done with when everybody's done with their step ups now we move to the next one so like it, that sounds like it would take forever yeah. at least in my experience it was it was very fluid you d- you weren't spending a lot of time waiting it oh, was a few awesome. seconds yeah you know? and they have made so many tweaks to the to their interface, interface. yes yeah they, it's it's so many things have been going on. Yeah, it's it's a lot to even catalog how many changes they've made. Uh, changes makes it sound like they had to fix things. Right. It's just tweaks to make it more engaging and more helpful. And like we talked about a while back, it, it tells you if you're doing something incorrectly now. Exactly. It corrects you politely. <laughs> they added <laughs> they added bar classes. They added Pilates classes. They yeah. added kickboxing classes. It's a uh, it's. It's becoming more robust every day. Absolutely. And right now you can try Tonal for 30 days risk-free. Visit uh, www.tonal.com for $100 off smart accessories when you use promo code the clipout at checkout. That's T-O-N-A-L dot com, promo code the clipout. Tonal, be your strongest. Peloton in the news. So there was an interesting article this week from ProPublica, which is like a an investigative journalism site. They they team up a lot with NPR or This American Life, and they do really lengthy stories that go really deep, really deep. I mean, these these are oftentimes 10, 15,000 word articles. I mean, they're 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 very, very detailed, but also painstakingly researched and uh, Peloton got mentioned in one and this maybe not be for the rest uh, but uh, it's just about the customer service reps that you talk to on the phone yeah and kind of the setup that they operate under and that it's not always the best for them it, yeah and you know the reason that we included it is because there have been a lot of changes to customer service within Peloton and sure. a lot of people um, there's been a lot more complaints than I've ever heard before. Now, yeah. now granted, there's a lot more, a lot more things being sold than there ever has sure. been before. But you know, the things that I've heard have been um, things that I never heard before. You know, d- people not showing up, right? Uh, no, no feedback, no getting back to them, even though they promised to. Weird answers from customer service. You know, I have never had a bad experience until recently. Uh, yeah. with customer service of Peloton and uh, it was minor and that's not my point. The The point is you can't help but wonder if these two things 
are related. Yeah. And just high level, basically the way it works is that this they use a company called Arise, and we should say that like this isn't like some deep dive expose on Peloton, Not and they're at all. using a company that lots of companies utilize for these sorts of services because it's hard to create that infrastructure, especially with the pandemic. Like this, that was one of the things that they talked about yeah. because it's like easy to add more people or subtract people right. without with without having like your own. Built in customer service You don't have to Bring those people in And train them They've already kind of know And so like uh, Disney uses them I think Airbnb uses yep, them those were two uh, mentioned. Comcast uses them So I mean it's it, This is a very common thing But basically It's this company Called Arise And then they The people that they End up hiring Work from home But they kind of work Freelance They don't actually work For a company Almost like an Uber driver Right And so therefore They don't always get The best uh, benefits And it can It doesn't always it it's takes a while downs- before you start getting paid. It's the downside of the uh, the gig, the gig economy. economy. Absolutely, and, yeah. Um, so anyway, if you want to check that out, there'll be a, a link on our Facebook page or uh, <laughs> in the uh, newsletter. Should we remember? Does a rise send out newsletters? Could we <laughs> no. Uh, <laughs> at theclipout.com, you can sign up for that newsletter. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm a bad newsletter sender. <laughs> And then, man, we hesitated to talk about this Ugh. one just because it's like anytime you... It's you, so polarizing. You you mentioned this group. It's like you're just scared of what you're going to create. But uh, Peloton this week uh, removed some QAnon hashtags from its platform. So uh, that was reported on Business Insider. Yep. So, uh, yeah. I don't know that there's really a whole lot to say about that. I, I do want to say one thing that uh, there were a lot of people that felt like... That's not fair because it's a political commentary. And I would say I disagree um, that there are um, to me, this is about theories and conspiracies and um, and that it's not like Peloton was taking down Biden uh, hashtags or or Trump dem- hashtag, democracy yeah. or, you know, Republicans or Trump, you know, this to me, the, that would be considered taking down political statements right. and that's not what this was yeah i tend to agree and and uh i mean even like pence has come out and been like yeah QAnon's not uh, really uh where you want to be so i mean that to me that should make it apolitical or non-political right so uh, but but uh i don't know we will see but anyway so i know that there's been a lot of pushback and people trying to sneak them on in the meantime so anyway that's uh that's what's going on and we'll yeah. move on to the next one yeah <laughs> And then we talked about uh, Robin Arzan a little bit last week. We did. But uh, she was featured again in Shape Magazine. Yes. A whole new platform. Uh, It's really crazy how these instructors are such huge celebrities now. Yeah. But it talks about it. Kind it talks about her diet again for while she's pregnant. And to be honest, I think they took a lot of the information that we talked about last week and and reused it. Sure. That's cool. You know, um, good. That's just more visibility for Peloton, for Robin um, and for fitness. You know, her whole thing is to make sure that she has a healthy pregnancy and that she can still keep exercising and keep being, you know, the fierce person that she is. So, yeah, we won't rehash the details too much since we talked about it last week, but uh, it's it's out there if you want to check it out. Yep. And then Cody was featured on the Hurdle podcast. Yeah, we uh, I can't remember a time Cody has been mentioned on a podcast. So this I think this might be the first time Cody has been on one, um, which I also thought was interesting because uh, heard when I hear hurdle, it sounds like a running podcast. And obviously, it's just yeah. in health. So I don't know that. But um, but I thought it was interesting that they chose to um, interview a cycling instructor. Uh, and fair. I haven't listened to the interview. Uh, it could just be that that's their favorite. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I have no idea. Well, the uh, the episode after his is called Hurdle Moment Running My Fastest Mile Ever. So. Exactly. Exactly. So uh, if you want to check it out, it's uh, from October 12th. Looks like episode 132. Checking out the competition. And then a, uh, a not good article. uh about a spin studio in Canada. 
Yeah. That ran into some issues with, uh, they said that they wouldn't call it a super spreader event, but they did call it a very large outbreak uh, that I think 61 people affiliated with the gym in some capacity. This, Yeah, this one says that it was 20 cases, this article. But I will say there were uh, articles that came out after this one. So a more recent one might have, because this is from October 9th. Yeah, so. I read an article about it in the Washington Post, and I believe the number was 61. Yikes. Yeah, and, um, and they said that they were following all the fitness protocols that were in place. And oh, it, and it still happened. Yeah, and it's sad that they were disinfecting and they took out half the bikes. And it sounds like the only thing that they that the only kind of um, wiggle room which was allowed yeah. in their defense they did not break any rules or recommendations but they let people take off their masks while they were on the bike so it was like you had to have the mask on until you clipped in then you could take it off when you were done put the mask on and then you clipped out so as long as you were on the bike you could have the, the mask off while you exercised which, Which I in get. theory, if you have your your six foot, you know, around you, you but, should be OK. Yeah, but I guess it's just people are sp- when you're in that closed of a and, space and they're and I think that six feet isn't designed for people that are breathing heavily that are performing aerobics. Right. Also, like, usually spin studios are closed off. And also there's usually fans moving the air around, right. which that doesn't that so if you had covid you would be spreading it around right i mean not on purpose of course totally but, totally so um yeah so uh, that is uh not a good sign for for gems no just another great reason to stay home and use your peloton yeah yikes and then also while we're talking about competitors soul cycle is back in the news this is a crazy story y'all so the soul cycle ceo that <laughs> was pushed out right was earning over a million dollars a year okay and also bought five thousand dollar dior handbags and seven hundred and fifty dollar helicopter rides to the hamptons on the company credit card oof yeah is that uh and this is all at the same time as they are being described as having a toxic workplace yeah, I see, Oof. like mean girls. Like mean girls. So, um, do you know when they say that he, that uh, the CEO was was doing helicopter rides to the Hamptons and these Dior bags? So these weren't business expenses. I mean, it is there is no business expense on the planet that requires you to have a five thousand dollar Christian Dior handbag. Fair enough. I just didn't. So I, I mean, I mean, I I'm assuming that that's the case. I didn't go through and read every little thing in here. Sure, but, sure. But I will also say. Um, that you know this all started last year because this is what she left last year and that was a huge deal right and i'm not quite clear why this is all coming up now unless it's a legal thing you know that's and that's kind of what i was wondering i'm like is that are they is there going to be legal ramifications are they basically saying that this is embezzlement It says a series of interviews with Business Insider that was published on Friday. Former staff claim that Waylon was ill prepared for the role and created a toxic work environment. So I and I guess the tipping point was the Dior bag incident that happened in the summer of 2019. That is pretty ballsy. I mean, you could kind of justify the helicopter ride to your house. I mean, it's that's a pretty like, but you you could say my time's really valuable. Uh, Yeah, but but (laughs) but yeah, it's funny because we were talking about. John Foley and, and nannies right, earlier right, in the episode, right. but I'm going to go out on a limb and say he's not billing that nanny back to Peloton. I <laughs> cannot imagine a world in which he would ever do that. Um, you know, and that's 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 one of the things I love about Peloton. They have scruples. Um, but yeah, what a crazy story. So uh, if you guys haven't been keeping up on that and you <laughs> want to know the details, if I manage to send out a newsletter this week, that definitely will be in there. <laughs> And then on a completely different note, the Peloton blog featured Tammy H. Yeah, and uh, that's Tammy Lynn over in the Clipout group, and she's also very active in uh, the Tread group. And man, we we got to meet her back at uh, Homecoming. Homecoming was it Homecoming at HRI at the time? It was keep them straight. Yeah, I know. It was. I think it was Homecoming. Um, but yeah, we got to meet her, and uh, so. 
she this is all about her workout it's like a diary of her different workouts that oh, she does okay. and so um if you want to follow her uh this is a great way to do it and it's a lot of workouts a lot of great workouts uh, so they go through every single day i love how they added the little videos yeah that's nice yeah are they videos or are they giffies okay that's fair now that they have them they don't have typing on them so it's hard to say yeah but yeah, she's got to work out for every day of the week. Uh huh. That is a lot. Busy, busy lady. Also a very busy mom, and and I believe a physician's assistant. So she's she is a busy, busy lady. That's a lot going on. I know. And also, real quick, uh, while we're talking about listeners, we should talk about Paul Bradley. We should. Uh, the Bradleys are one of my one of the couples near and dear to my heart. They've been around the uh, clip out for a very long time. And uh, Paul Bradley, uh, he decided to take on the Moab 240, which and you should probably explain for people that don't know. Yeah. So for anybody that doesn't know, that means running on a trail on purpose, 240 miles in a row. And you have to complete it in a certain number of hours, which the number of hours escapes me right um, but whatever so, that number is it's too little too because little that's that's a lot of running yeah yeah you don't get like a week off between right you know like i mean that's like that's like that's almost 10, like marathons 10 marathons in a row. back to back like, yeah what, what and so um and keep in mind that's on a trail that's yeah. not on pavement i mean i guess wow just i can't even imagine where you would go for 240 miles yeah I can't even imagine even attempting something like no, that. No, me either. Yeah. Me either. Uh, you know, Paul really impressed me that he that he went out for this, and um, and I have to say, unfortunately, he got an injury. Uh, he was like fifty miles in and got an injury, and he finished. He finished till mile fifty-seven. Like he got to fifty-seven, and he had to stop. But he he had hurt his Achilles tendon a couple months ago, and he had gotten it back in shape and everything. Right. Um, but it it got injured. He stumbled on a rock out there Oof. in the middle of nowhere, yeah. running in the dark, and uh, and he just couldn't couldn't finish. And, uh, and still did another six or seven miles. Yeah. injured and yeah. Like I mean, my hat's off to you. That's like, that's over, that's like double what I did on the treadmill. I mean, that's crazy. Yeah. And he was running it. So, so uh, we're yeah. so proud of you, Paul. Like, we just think you are amazing. And uh, I I can't even imagine that you went out and did this. So, and his wife, Karen, was his, uh, his support crew and his daughter, Cora, was his support crew and they were awesome. So, um just wanted to say congrats for making it as far as you did that is one hell of a an accomplishment yeah, man that's, that's still <laughs> o- like over two marathons yeah in a row in a like, row in a row in a row <laughs> so no no shame While there injured <laughs> jeez my hat's off to you man new content Peloton has a new Broadway series starting with Hamilton, the only show on Broadway anyone has ever cared about. I'm so excited. <laughs> it's so funny. Like, I know I've mentioned this like twice just tonight, but like, I am so excited about this. Um, I'm probably not going to be able to, but the run, uh, the ride is in an hour and then uh, tomorrow. So that's Wednesday. Mm-hmm. And then there's going to be a run with Maddie. So the ride is with Robin. Run is going to be with Maddie. And then there is a yoga flow to Hamilton as well with Ross Rayburn. How about that? Each of them are like 30 minutes long and uh, people are saying, will there be more? But they build it as a series. So I can't imagine there yeah. won't be more. And there are lots of other Broadway shows. Yes. I, I know a lot of times people don't realize that because everything's about Hamilton lately. Yeah. But there are other Broadway shows. There's at least, I'd say. Like five. Music Man and then, and then yeah. Yeah, like at least six <laughs> at least six of them so um i think you could expect at least five more in this series uh it'll be interesting to see because i have seen the ideas be gotcha. floated that they should be the next uh the next series. series yeah but um but also somebody mentioned another one today that they absolutely loved i care it's already gone it's out of my mind it went away the producers that'd be a good one it was not mentioned but that would be a good one yeah yeah there's so many there's so many i mean i know you were joking when you said there's only six but like yeah. like there are there's so many that would make amazing songs absolutely on easter they could do jesus christ superstar what is that one we went to go see that was uh in new york and then we saw it again here in st louis off 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 broadway oh be more chill yeah i know it didn't last very long and i know a lot of people didn't get to see it but oh my god the music to that oh, one yeah the soundtrack on that is great. i would love that to be a series and it's very up up tempo so mm-hmm. if you haven't check out be more chill it was really good yeah 
Speaking of up tempo. Yeah. So there's a tempo flash challenge. Up the tempo is the official name of it. So it was terribly worded the first time it came out. Yeah. And it was something like take six live DJ rides and something else in the next 21 days. And Jackie Sincata posted and was like, what the what? Like, wh- I don't even understand. Like, there's not six live rides for me to take in the next. Right. Days. But it's not what it was trying to say. It was trying to say, take six music classes in the next 21 days that are music oriented, one of which is also called live DJ rides. That's yeah, (laughs) because that's the name of the series, right? You know, and it can be from what I understand, it can be any class. It doesn't even have to just be a ride. But again, since it said live DJ ride, it kind of sounded like it. But I think you can take any music classes that are themed or music oriented or DJs are involved in the next 21 days. And if we're wrong, you'll find out when you don't get your badge, get your badge. But uh, yes, it goes from October 12th through November 1st. So make sure to get your badge. Peloton birthdays. And then last but not least, he's no longer a Peloton instructor, but he was a, a well-loved one for a long time. Yes. Uh, Stephen Little is celebrating a birthday, we think, on October 18th. I uh, I put together our Pelo birthday calendars, and so I cyber-stalked some of these people to try to find out when their birthdays were. <laughs> and there were lots, lots of posts about his birthday on October 18th. So I'm assuming that's when his birthday is. We're going to go ahead and assume it. If it's not, it won't matter. It's not like he listens. So it's for everybody else, right? So if all of a sudden he starts getting birthday wishes on October 18th and I'm wrong, he'll he'll figure it out then. Yeah. It'll be okay. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. If not, then eventually. Right. Happy (laughs) unbirthday. Checking in with the Peloton community. So uh, joining us today via the magic of Zoom Tube is the ever patient Jeff Wall. <laughs> hey Jeff. Hey, how are you? Good. I say ever patient because we were supposed to interview him the other day and things went awry, and so we we yeah. rescheduled him, and he was very very polite. Yes. And gracious. Patient, so thank you. kind. <laughs> You're already thank off you. to a great start. Yes. <laughs> good. That's good to know. Good to know. <laughs> Because I'm in the hot seat, right? <laughs> <laughs> These hardball questions. You're gonna get <laughs> yeah, I'm a regular Mike Wallace. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> Where were you on the night of October 15, <laughs> 1996? What do you answer mean me you now. don't remember? Answer me now. <laughs> we also watch a lot of Dateline. Yes. I uh, gotcha. gotcha. Uh, so um, how did you originally find out about Peloton? Okay, go, let's go, this goes back to December of 2018. I was at my store. I'd mentioned to you earlier, I own and operate two tire and automotive stores. So I basically work on retail. There was a customer in the store and I don't remember exactly what started the conversation, but uh, I did, I said something along the lines of wanting to work out or wanting to, to, to get back into some type of exercise program. I'd kind of fallen off the bandwagon. We can get deeper into what I used to do later but uh long story short she said i she said i got something i can recommend to you that there's a the, an, an app peloton a uh, digital app and they've got a free trial you can actually try this thing they got all kind of different workouts it's great you can you know you can ride your bike they've got you know exercise classes and boot camp classes and all the shit i'm doing the boot camp classes but so anyway i, I went and tried the the peloton digital app I used to, I alluded, or I used to be a, a, a many years ago in a former life. I was a a, a, a spin instructor, a Johnny G certified spin instructor, oh, and okay. a, a personal trainer. It was during a transitional period uh, between careers. A very magic time in my life, by the way. I loved that job. It was really one of the coolest jobs I ever had because you could really, you could literally see the positive impact you're making in people's lives. Very cool. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, we'll get into that a little bit later with what I'm doing now. But uh, it sounds like you're just a big fan of wheels. I am. <laughs> I am. I've been wheels riding. with you. <laughs> been right. Been riding my bikes my whole life. So, so nonetheless, I, I had this happen to have a Johnny G, a, a Star Trek uh, Johnny G spin bike that I'd had for about 15 years. This thing stashed. I hadn't ridden it in 10 years. It stashed, and I decided to get this thing back and get on and get on a health kick. I'd put on too much weight and was, you know, work stressing out at work and just got fat and you know how you know how life gets in the way i know all so about time, fat. <laughs> there you go so so i pull the bike out and i try the peloton app i pull the bike out and i actually stick it in my office i'm sitting in my office and for my computer now so i used to have the bike literally right behind me staring at my computer screens i did the peloton digital app on my bike okay. for uh well 
<clears throat> until February of, of, of this year, 2020. So I guess what, a year and a half, which my, my wife couldn't stand that. She's, she has a computer desk in the office as well. She, so she oh, the no. whole time, like this bike is, we gotta get this bike out of here. I just can't <laughs> this bike any longer. But nonetheless, I was, I, I loved the, the, the Peloton uh, digital app from the very beginning. I did, a, a, I don't remember the exact number, but definitely over 150 rides on the digital app with my Johnny G uh, Star Trek spinner bike. And I like that bike. It was, it was gym quality, commercial grade. It was a great bike, but just doesn't, didn't have the ability to track all the metrics that the, that the, the Peloton bike does. So that's really what got me to the uh, Peloton bike and what, what got me to convert that. So I've sold, I, I have since February, I sold my, um, uh, Johnny G bike and, and got it, got the Peloton bike. It's upstairs in an exercise room that we've been kind of, it's a, a bonus room that we kind of been building out as an exercise room bit by bit and really just about have it complete. I mean, it's really a, it's gotten to be a very, very nice setup. My wife won the argument about getting the bike out of the office. And I, I was resistant to that. I was like, no, I really like it. I really want to put it in the, you know, really want to keep it in the office. And finally, you know, I was like, all right, whatever, we can put it upstairs now. And now I actually love it up there and I love the exercise room. And so she, she likes to point out that she was right about that one. And she, she was. <laughs> Yeah. I have a quick question about this, the Star Trek bike. I'm assuming yeah. it doesn't have like a phaser or anything like that. <laughs> yeah. Um, but like, I find that really irritating because like, like they will sue the crap out of anybody that says spin in really, but then they have a bike called Star Trek. It's uh, well, I know I may have mispronounced it. It's a Star Trek. Uh, that, yeah, that, but still, ma- you know what they're yes. getting at. Oh, of you course, know, yeah. like yeah, that Star Trek. Yeah. <laughs> That's they're the new Panera St. Louis bread co. That's <laughs> I don't like that at all. Oh my word. I just just heard that one too in your last last episode. Yeah, so I know all the controversy about St. Louis bread company and Panera. Yeah. <laughs> it's like if you don't live here, you have no yeah. idea that it's a different company. It's so right. funny, a different name. Oh, that's hilarious. Okay, so <laughs> just upsets me. We we know it's very hypocritical. Yeah. I'm calling you out, Johnny G. <laughs> Is that his name? Yeah. 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 That, That's his name. <laughs> okay. So, um, what, what, tell us about this timeline between like when you were spinning, uh, you were spin instructor be- between that and when you got your bike, like, what does that look like? Is that five years or 10 years? What kind of time frame? Between my, when I got my Peloton bike. No, like when you used to be a spin instructor, like, and you said you, you stopped, you stopped working out as much yeah, and then you got I, back into it. Right. So I, the, yeah, the period of was about 15 years. So I, that was, I was in my very early forties. I'm 58 right now. So I'm in my very early forties when I was doing that, as I said, a career transition is, and I told you, <clears throat> I, we own and operate, I have partners, we own and operate two tire and automotive stores. We had built those stores and I, I originally went in as an, an investor. I'm you know, fully involved now as, as general manager, but uh, at the time I went in as an investor of those again, during a, a career transition period and I had, that's when I was doing this, the spin, uh, the spin thing. I was actually teaching about 15 classes a week. I taught at almost every oh. gym in, ta- in our, in our market. And boy, does everybody love to do, to do interval. I mean, what kind of class you guys want? Interval, interval, interval. So 15, 15 interval classes a week, not quite, Ooh. but seriously, a lot of bike riding. Uh, and, and, and you can, you can well imagine, I bet, you know, I lived my life in a, in a gym and, and I enjoyed it. I was thin at the time. Uh, I did not have good nutritional habits, maybe a little better then because I had the accountability of working in a gym, but I worked out like a fiend literally hours per day. So I did not have a weight issue then. What happens, we build the stores, uh, my time gets drawn, you know, pr- pretty much fully into operating these businesses bit by bit until I'm fully absorbed, don't have time for the other workout thing. And that just fell by the wayside and, and well, 15, I mean- year, 15 years passed and I, I put on you know over 60 60 70 pounds yeah i mean doing 15 classes a week like going from that to yeah working you could probably eat like anything you wanted anything i wanted and when i was and i'll tell you the truth uh, when i when i was in my 20s i did triathlons and i literally could eat anything i want i worked in the my previous career was printing and i worked in a printing job i would i would get home from work and hop on my bike and, and it was I lived in Pascagoula Mississippi at the time and I could ride about 20 miles north it may have been more like 18 miles north from where I lived and there was a, a blue hole it was there was an excavation site that had been used to build interstate 10 
and they dug down. It was a pretty interesting story. They dug down until they hit uh, groundwater, and this hole filled up so fast that it was uh, that the excavation equipment actually is still down there. It got flooded, and they lost all their equipment in this building. So this <laughs> this little this little quarter acre lake of, of pretty pretty blue water out in the middle of nowhere. And I would hop on my bike after work. I did this at least three days a week. Hop on my bike, ride up 18 miles, jump off my bike, swim half a quarter mile across the lake, quarter mile back for half mile swim, hop on my bike, ride home, and then have dinner. And I could eat, prom I promise you I could eat whatever I wanted, including a half gallon of ice cream if I felt like it, because I burned just an insane number of calories and I'm in my 20s, right? Right. Yeah, so really fast nice. forward, yeah, fast forward a little bit. I'm fully absorbed. I'm a manager in the, in the printing, printing business. I went, to, I went to work for USA Today during their startup. Oh. startup cycle in their early days and, and worked insane, insane hours. I was printing plant manager working 24 seven. And again, exercise falls off the wayside. I, I'm kind of an all of it or all of it or none of it kind of guy, addictive personality, if you will. So I'm either all in work or all in workouts, whatever I'm doing, I'm doing it wide open, right? So I'm wide open working and getting fat is what I'm doing <laughs> during that period. And I, I went back to try to do the exercise thing and lose some weight again, having all these terrible nutrition habits in my life. And as the years passed, I will tell you that my, my one tool that I really knew how to use to lose weight, which was exercise became less and less and less effective. Uh, now I did tell you in my forties that I was able to stay pretty trim by working out again, just a completely obscene amount of time, the kind of hours that no one other than somebody who's employed full time in the fitness industry could possibly put into working right. out. And again, a short period of time, it was about a two year period of my life when I was able to do that back to work, slow down the exercise, terrible eating habits, stress at work. And as I said, boom, got fat, put on way, way too much weight. So I find myself when, it, you know, around the time of, of adding the Peloton bike or wanting to get back into riding, I find myself way overweight at the, at the last year, I weighed 242 pounds. I'm six feet tall. That is the clinical definition of, of morbidly obese. So I'm a big old fat guy in my fifties now. I, I'll let me segue and say one brief thing about nine years ago, I tried, I ran a half marathon and I, and I tried to do that was my one last go at the exercise to lose weight thing. I'm going to train for a half marathon, had a good buddy. We ran hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of miles and did it right through the dead of winter. And even though I live in the deep South, I remember doing, I remember doing three specific runs where it was 11 degrees. Mm -hmm. So we're out in the cold doing 10 mile runs, freezing, training. I trained for this thing for six months. I ran this race and I weighed 227 pounds. I lost 15 pounds uh -huh. in six months of running and running and running and running. And I would call that a complete failure. And I finished I would, the race. I would call that bullshit. Like that's, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. not fair. You need to write a letter to management. <laughs> and I'll tell you, and, and you know what? I, I'll tell you what, nine years ago, I finished the race and said, you know what? I officially hate running. It ruined running for me. It sucked. I weighed 227 pounds. I was too heavy to be running a half a marathon. It hurt. I didn't have a great time. And not that even that, that even matters. I finished the race. But it, I didn't feel good. It, it, it really, it really sucked. And I said, you know what? I hate running. I'm just not going to do that anymore. So that, that's where I was at as far as exercising to lose weight. Okay. Uh, and I ran into, and you didn't even ask this question. I'll kind of segue into the into the weight loss thing, if you don't mind. No, uh, sure. So I I, 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 I met a health coach last year, somebody who I watched lose a great deal of weight, 108 pounds, and uh, and just ask how did you do it? Tell me, tell me how you did it. And so she shared her nutrition plan with me. And I started November, last November 3rd, as I told you, I weighed 242 pounds and lost 63 pounds in five months, hundred percent, hundred percent through nutrition, hundred percent through nutrition. She even said, I mentioned Peloton. And she said, as we were, as we were discussing this nutrition plan, she said, Jeff, you cannot do Peloton rides and do this nutrition plan. You're, just, you you're not so going to take calories. Yeah, you're not going to take in enough calories. You can't. As soon as I mentioned Peloton, Peloton has a reputation for being a for being a very hard uh, uh, cardio act. Obviously, a very hard physical cardio activity, anaerobic cardio. And but I, here's what I told her because I was I kind of stuck my head, you know, I kind of dug in my heels on that and said, I don't think you understand how much bike riding I've done in my life. I can do a bike ride and dial it down. There are, you know, every, every ride doesn't have to be an interval ride. There is such thing as a recovery or a, or a low impact ride is what, is what Peloton calls them. Uh, I can do a much lower impact ride. It's the equivalent of a mile or a mile and a half walking around the block. And I will agree to dial it down. So that's what I did, but I just want to stress that 
my weight loss was based on nutrition. It wasn't based on exercise. I am exercising at a much higher level now that I've lost 63 pounds. I weigh 179. I weigh five pounds more than when I graduated from high school, wow. which was way beyond any goal that I had set. I'd never in my life imagined. I've spent my, my whole life, I've been above 200 pounds, my adult life, excuse me. My entire adult life, I've been above 200 pounds, most of the time, way above 200 pounds. So I went from a 40 inch waist to a 32 inch waist in this process. And I've learned so much about nutrition and discovered it is the primary weight loss tool. It is exercise is a weight maintenance tool. And that's what I'm using Peloton for now. So um, what, what do you think is the biggest change that you made to your nutrition that was, that made you so successful? Smaller portions, uh, eaten more often throughout the day. Really? Yep. So yep. did they Smaller, have you, yeah. which is how, which is how bodybuilders right? have been eating for decades. Yeah. Well, that, that is true. Yeah. How right. many, how many calories do you, I mean, cause I know that not everybody can go by your calories. So anybody right. out there yeah. listening, don't try to follow this, like talk to your own nutrition guidance guide, you know, person to guide you through. Right. But like, how much did you, how much were you eating before you started? And then what did you go down to from a calorie standpoint? I would say, uh, I mean, I pretty much ate fast food for lunch every day. And if I had to take a guess, I would say I was probably eating, you know, 3000 calories per day, possibly more a typical American diet, very, very carb heavy diet, a lot of bread, a lot of pasta, a lot of sweets. So I definitely had a sweet tooth. So, uh, so carbs have been dramatically reduced. This is not keto, but it is definitely a much lower carb load than the typical American diet. And during my weight loss phase, I was doing I'm probably averaging about 1100 calories a day between a thousand and 1200, is probably accurate 75 oh. to 90 grams of carbs. Wow. That and is- at that point, you, so, so this process, and by the way, I, I coach people on this now I've worked with more than a hundred clients already. It's highly, highly effective. Part of the process is training your body to stop storing body fat. And then another part of the process is, is to, to teach your body to, or force your body, if you will, to go after stored body fat and use it for fuel. So do you do yeah. that with like intermittent fasting? Is that, is that your, it's, it's not, no, we're really the opposite of that. And I will tell you, my doctor had been on my behind, uh, I, I didn't, the last thing I did before doing this nutrition plan was intermittent fasting at my doctor's recommendation. He was concerned. I was showing signs of pre-diabetes and diabetes runs heavily, heavily in my dad's side of the family, bad, bad problem. So here I am way overweight. And I, you know, it, he was, I was showing signs of insulin resistance and he's talking to me about pre-diabetes, yada, yada, yada. And I was taking that seriously. I just quite frankly, didn't know what to do. So he, he recommended intermittent fasting. The problem is I didn't really address what I was eating that was wrong. I'm not saying that that could, w- wouldn't have worked for me, but I will say that what I'm doing is, is kind of the polar opposite of if this is eating all the time. This is, right. this is taking in calories every two or three hours throughout the day, small, smaller portions, but eating all the time. Okay. So yeah, the, um, almost, and- almost the polar opposite of it. It sounds it. It does. Yeah. But I hear that a lot. I mean, a lot of people swear by that, that it's mm-hmm. like that way your body's just constantly like in that burning mode. And you're never, that's correct. you're never starving. Yeah, that's like- correct. You're, you're, you're not hungry because you're, you're getting eat all the time. And, and uh, yeah, one of the things I learned that, that I was making a mistake, I, I you know, I, I didn't know I was making a mistake, but, uh, but like a lot of people I was where, <clears throat> we're, we're a lot of what we're doing, we being Americans, I'm talking about our typical diet. And of course, you know, our country's exploded in obesity. I don't I can share a few statistics, but basically two thirds of Americans are, are, are overweight or obese. And I live in Mississippi. You guys are in Missouri. It's no better. Uh, we're in some of the fattest, we're in some of the fattest states in the country. I mean, it's just, it's just a fact it's, it's, it, it, and sadly, actually overweight is normal now. And when you get to like, when I started losing weight, I, as I, after I got past about 30 pounds, people were like, Jeff, slow down, slow down. You're getting too skinny. I'm not too skinny. I was wearing 40 inch pants. I mean, I'm a big old fat gut. <laughs> you I, know, I'm in 32, I'm in 32 now. I'm proud, but people have been telling me to, to, to stop for the last 25 pounds. And I just now got to a healthy weight. I say, you, you know, know you're doing ago, good in your weight loss journey when people take you aside and they're like are you sick is everything (laughs) okay (laughs) correct but you know you raise a really good point that like when you live in a state like we do you're you're right people encourage you to be heavier like that is the norm and so so when you start losing weight it's like it stop doing that you're you're not eating enough you're not doing enough you're absolutely right and and it's 
Yeah. It kind of messes with your head. <laughs> an ob it's called an obesogenic society that we live in, and, and right, that it's we're we're predisposed to toward fatness, and it and it kind of makes people uncomfortable when <laughs> when you're not fat. And I've hey, I've been I've been making people comfortable my whole life. I gotta say, <laughs> I gotta say that. But back to what I, I was going to just do one quick thing about nutrition about what and what we're doing wrong, or what I was doing wrong, the mistake we were making with with this high carb and, and, and high calorie diet and and skipping meals. So we're teaching our body by the, by going these long intervals without eating. We're teaching our body that we don't know when our, the next meal's coming, so we better hang on to what we got, right? So you, you eat a big meal. It's loaded with carbs. It's it's high in carbs. What you know that those that, and and not just carb, not just bread, but but added sugars in particular. And that's not just cane sugar or brown sugar. That's corn sweeteners, and there's a whole host of all kinds of sugars that are that are in our foods right now. Those things go into your system. They elevate your blood sugar. Your body's natural response when your blood sugar is elevated is to dump insulin into the bloodstream to try and try and lower the blood sugar. The way it does that, because that's not in a safe condition for it, the way it does that is by forcing that out of the bloodstream. Where does it force it? Into your fat cells. So that is happening like fat storage is happening on an almost daily basis with the style of eating that I was doing and that most Americans were doing. And I didn't know necessarily, I mean, I knew I was eating some foods that I probably shouldn't have eaten. I didn't really fully appreciate the impact of how devastating that is, particularly as you age, your metabolism slows down and your body's predisposed to store fat, store fat, store fat, store fat. Well, at what point, did, what point do you ever get to, to actually unlocking stored fat and using it for fuel? At what point does that ever happen? For, for so most of us, never. It's, right, hey, especially when we have, if we you got a desk job and you're sitting around all day or, yeah. Correct, correct. You never reach that point. So what your body actually has to, your body has to utilize all of the free floating carbs is what they're called. So when you eat that and your blood sugar is elevated, those are called free floating carbs in your bloodstream. That's the easiest stuff for your body to, to, to grab for, for energy. That's what it's going to do. Path of least resistance grabs free floating carbs. Your muscles themselves store glycogen, that's energy at the cellular level. It's stored with water and it's available for quick bursts of energy. If when we ride our bike, we're obviously, we're burning glycogen at the muscular level. So that stuff all has to be depleted. Your body's got to be out of all of that stuff. And then after paths of leaf resistance are all removed, then it will go after stored body fat. The fat has to go from fat stores to your liver to be metabolized or converted into through, through a chemical process into energy into a form that your muscles can use for energy and then it goes to the muscles and get used well that's a much slower process that and this is why my coach was saying jeff you're not going to be able to do pellets on rise your body can't supply the energy from stored fat as fast as it can glycogen at the muscular level and because of that anaerobic cardio doesn't work on an 1100 calorie you know 75 to 90 gram of carb uh, nutrition plan. It doesn't, but the good news is some weight will fly off you. You eat like that. It's, it's shocking. I lost an average of four pounds a week for, for five months. Wow. Yeah. So that's without, like what without, I work, without working out all, all nutrition. Yeah. I did a weight loss study years ago and, and was it, and it was through Washington university. So it was a reputable, reputable. thing. I, I, yeah. I say that because when I tell you what they had me do, you're going to think it was not reputable, but right. they, I did, I, my, it was 900 calories a day and I couldn't go over 20 carbs a day. And, yeah, right. uh, and it's hard I was like that. Yeah. Yeah. And I was losing like six to eight pounds a week. Yep. Like it was. Yep. Just, and, and it works and, for Tom to eat like that because he doesn't eat fruits and vegetables. Right. So he so, doesn't yeah, eat carbs yeah. at all. So for me, giving up <laughs> carbs is basically giving up like Cheetos Junk. and Fritos yeah. and yeah, all that, you know, bread and stuff like that. And, you know, so, it, so that's, that's, that's that's fascinating. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's so, cool stuff. Yeah. It, so it, I've done, not crazy. I've done, I, I can tell you this, I, I, over my life, again, I'm 58 over my lifetime and, and being a, being a big guy, a large American, as I say, uh, I have done just about every kind of nutrition plan, diet, whatever. And I recall doing one called a zigzag diet that, 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 uh, that bodybuilders do. And a, and a, and a, and a trainer <laughs> shared this with me. I did it for one week and it's basically in a nutshell, there's a little more to it, but in a nutshell, it's eat whatever you want one day, zero carbs, the next, whatever you want the next day, zero carbs, the next by the end of the week, I promise you, I felt so bad. I was like, I don't care whether I lose weight or not. I'm not doing this anymore. I was trying to <laughs> kill myself. I mean, not literally, but I mean, seriously, I felt like crap. Yeah. So putting your body through that. And that's one of those things that bodybuilders do to get the slash the body fat is 
I guess throw, I don't know, confuse your body. Well, I don't know what it is, but don't, don't do the zigzag diet. Yeah, that, that, one's, that one's no fun. Yeah, that one's no fun. Yeah, that sounds yeah. pretty rough. Well, I want to completely change directions. Speaking of zigzags. Yeah, let's let's zig. Uh, I wanted I want to hear about your volunteering that you do as a pilot, uh, because this is just a fascinating subject. So so tell us what you do to volunteer and how you got started, because with all the jobs you mentioned, you never said pilot. (laughs) (laughs) Right, right. And it, it, it. Okay. Well, thank you. Thanks for asking that. So, uh, so 11 years ago, I, well, let me back up further than that. Little, little baby boy born on an air force base. My dad, my dad was in the air force. I'm born in the, born in the Philippines. So I, he was stationed overseas. That Grew explains on the there. accent. <laughs> there, yeah, right, right. Exactly. But I grew up on military bases and around airplanes, uh, really my entire life. I had a fascination with them, but I did not, and maybe because I was on military bases and around probably what are some of the best pilots in the world, it had never occurred to me to, to work on my pilot's license. Fascinated by airplanes, absolutely fascinated by it. On the other hand, it seemed like maybe a goal or the goal too far, but in my, uh, in my forties, I, I got bit by a bug and it just I decided I, I want to I want to take flying lessons. It wasn't really a particularly good time in our household for my wife, but I really sat down with her and said, this is this is something that has kind of been on the back burner of my mind for many years. It is important to me. I want to do this now. I mean, it's, it's, it's going to be expensive, no, no doubt. But I, but I, but here's I, but I'm serious about this is I want to do this. And here's the thing. If, if I'm going to get a license and, 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 and have the ability for us to fly maybe in the region and see family and do whatever we want to do. This is not something I can wait until 65. I retire and then start doing. I will. You time out. You, t- you time out. You know they sure. don't necessarily in, in general aviation. They don't necessarily un, unlike uh, uh, in commercial pilots or you know uh, tra- air, air transport pilots. They don't necessarily pull your license when you get 65. On the other hand, there is some point at which your skills will degrade to the point where they will not renew your ability to fly. You won't get signed off. And so, and, or you may have a medical event like a heart attack or <clears throat> even kidney stones or diabetes or something like that can, can ground you permanently. So I, I told her, I, this is something that I, I feel the need to do this right now. And, and even though it wasn't, a, again, a great financial time for us at the moment, our business, we, we're, we're struggling a little bit. It was a, it was a, a rough time for us, but I felt the, the pull to do that. So I kind of dove in with both feet, went, started working on my license, uh, got that done and went to the instrument, went to my instrument rating. So there, so <clears throat> I spent this period of about uh, three years of, of studying and flying and studying and flying and studying and flying and all the while working, 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 working. So basically all my free time, it, I, I got to the end of the process. So I got my, got my private ticket. I got my instrument rating. I, at the, by that point, I'm president of flying, of a flying club with, with, uh, with three Cessna airplanes. And I got my, I passed my, my uh, uh, instrument check ride, which by the way, your private pilot check ride and your instrument check ride, especially as an adult are probably among the most terrifying things I've ever done in my life. It's like a two and a half hour oral with a guy that knows 10,000 times as much as you do, you know, a total, total asymmetrical information well, situation. Yeah, very, very intimidating. So two and a half hour oral after a, you know, a, a, a very, very difficult proctored written exam that has to be out of the way first. And then about two hours worth of riding to uh, flying to show to demonstrate maneuvers and whatnot. So you just have two and a half hours off. of oral sounds like a lot. It's I mean, brutal. It's, it's absolutely brutal. It, it's, it's brutal. So I get through all of that and, and fly and flying with my instructor and time after time after time, I get to the end of that. I'm like, right, what do I do now? <laughs> <laughs> what do I do now? <clears throat> so here I am at my store. I, I spend a lot of time in my store, right? Uh, another customer, we're having this conversation like, well, I just finished my instrument checker. I'm not sure where I'm going to go. She said, Jeff, there is an organization called Pilots and Paws. Please look into it. it it's, it's a wonderful organization. They transport animals, mostly dogs. They transport uh, all kinds of animals for free for rescues around the country. Please look into that. It's such a great thing. And man, what a what an awesome way to use your pilot's license it would yeah. be. So I go home and look up pilotsandpaws.org. It's pilots, the letter N, paws.org. And what it is, is it's basically a huge clearinghouse. It's a, it's a, 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 it's a giant short charity, but effectively what Pilots and Paws runs is a big uh, smart messaging board where 
requests to transport animals are posted and pilots can get the receive those and, and, and transport the animals. And a lot of times th these can be pretty complicated transports. If you know anything about rescue, you know, dogs are mostly, I know mean, there are millions of dogs being euthanized in the U.S. every year, and most of them are in the South, unfortunately. You don't have good spay neuter laws down here. And at any rate, a lot of the animals that are in the south and in order to keep them from getting euthanized will get vetted and they get moved to the northeast where they are adopted more easily where there are a lot more spay neuter laws I never and a lot few yeah. lot few oh yeah they're, they're yeah. moving by the they're moving by the tens of thousands wow by by ground so a typical transport might be from texas or louisiana or mississippi or alabama to you know to new jersey or the chicago area a lot of them go to maine they're they're just the animals are moving all the time at any rate i, I hop on this the day, this is the day after I got my instrument ticket. I hop on this board and there's a, a puppy that needs to go from Shreveport, Louisiana to, to Columbus, Georgia. And I'm halfway in between, it, right near in Jackson, Mississippi Metro. And I said, well, that'd be great. That'd be a, that'd be a cool thing. So I called my instructor because I just had, you know, the weather was not good, by the way. I just had my, just got my ticket the day before. And I said to my instructor, hey, I'm, I'm thinking about doing this pilots and paws thing uh, tomorrow. You think you can go with me? And he agreed to go with me, which was really a good thing because I got to use my instrument ticket like big time He's my different. very next the very next day yeah. we took off and go to shreveport and had to do a low instrument approach at shreveport we met the the um uh, rescue picked up the dog flew from there to columbus georgia got to shoot a low approach in columbus georgia go to fly home its ceilings are so low we couldn't even land on our home field and we had to divert to jackson international where they had had uh, better instrument equipment for landing so i really got real world experience yeah that was um, number one. That was a cool thing to to help that way. Number two, it like, as I said, I just got some really great real world experience, and it was very simple to just hop on and do that. So the way that works, uh, Pilots and Paws runs this organization. the The pilots volunteer their you know the the rescues go on there, and, and they need assistance. The pilots volunteer their time and, and the expenses for the airplane. It is a it, the the expenses for that, by the way, are a, are a charitable deduction. Uh, so, and, and as, as a recreational pilot, let me just say, that's about as good as it gets uh, <laughs> to, you know, seriously, that's about yeah. as good as it gets to be able to fly and, and actually, and actually achieve something that helps somebody and then actually get to write that off as well. Yeah, I so mean, that it's worked not out. an inexpensive hobby. So absolutely. No, that's, that's correct. And I yeah. will tell you this. So, so I've flown a bunch of missions. I've flown, I don't know. I, I stopped counting pilots and pause missions a long time ago. Uh, it's way, way over a hundred missions. And I'll, I'll get into angel flight here in just a little bit. I've flown just almost a hundred angel flight missions. And here's what I tell people, because I do speak about this, about volunteer flying a little bit around uh, civic organizations. I promise I absolutely would, would still fly these missions if they weren't deductible. I just wouldn't be able to fly as many. It just, mm -hmm. it, it just helps. And there's a reason, there is a reason that the government allows that. And I'm, and I'm proud of that. So it does. Yeah, it, it helps lower the cost, but it's really a cool thing. So that's how Pilots and Paws works. I, I just jumped in and, and started picking up dogs here and there and everywhere and kind of got to be known as the guy who flies dogs. I've met some <laughs> of the, you know, right, the guy. So, yeah, we take them anywhere and everywhere. And and and, and it's just one of my free time. I'm, you know, I'm mostly working and usually just have one day off per week. So a lot of times I'll fly on my one day off during the week, which also is a good thing. You know, some people can only fly on the weekends. I happen to have the ability to have a weekday off most days which allows me to 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 connect with with people during work days as i mentioned a lot of these flights i wouldn't necessarily it wouldn't make sense in a, in a small airplane to try and fly an animal from you know in the deep south all the way to new jersey or whatnot it would be a rare exception from one pilot to make that so a lot of times these 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 uh, will be linked together in legs of, of two or three so there does there there is a need for coordination. There's also a need for for fo overnight fostering, you know, long term and short term fostering and whatnot. So there's a it's a big volunteer effort. I will tell you when I when I you know I told you it's been eight years ish ago. There were when I first joined Pilots and Paws, and you can go on and join. You can sign into this this message board for free. There's no no cost for for anybody ground or pilot. There were six thousand active users at the time of uh, 2000 of them were pilots so 4000 4000 non pilots involved 2 years ago there were 36000 i haven't looked i haven't looked in the longest time i actually Whoa. don't spend yeah ex explosive growth big big need for this there are animals moving all over the country and i mentioned i mean all over the country all the time 
by air and of course by ground, but but by air, they're literally flying all over hundreds, you know, hundreds of flights per day. Uh, it's there's a there's a lot going on and in a big need for that. So that's awesome. So when did you officially start that? That would have been uh, 2012 or 2013. Wow. Yeah. And then yeah. what yeah. are what are angel flights? So angel flight uh, missions are ambulatory medical missions. And uh, it's another it's another uh, pilot charity, and it's 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 one that's become really near and dear to my part, my heart. I, I just love that the organization I fly for is called Angel Flight Soars. They are headquartered in, in Atlanta at, at uh, Peachtree Decab Airport, uh, PDK, and they cover the Southeast region. So there are eight Angel Flight entities in the U.S. Eight eight in eight. Uh, charities that share that name and they have blocked off regions. So the one I fly for covers Georgia, Alabama, Mississippi, Tennessee, North and South Carolina. So <clears throat> in Mississippi, I'm all the way in the, I'm all the way in their farthest Western territory, which, which can, and, and also I mentioned that I normally have a day off during the week. That also, that also makes me especially valuable to them because a lot of times patients need to travel for doctor's appointments during sure. the week. Yeah. So I'm out here in their Western outpost and I'm, and I'm, um, and I'm oftentimes available during the week when they need me. And, um, and so that's been a cool thing. It does require a little more experience. It does require an instrument rating uh, to fly angel flights. You're, you're obviously flying human passengers instead of, instead of animals. By the way, I never got a complaint, not a single complaint about the dogs from the dogs about my flying. And so that, I decided <laughs> to step up to you. That's my joke there. The dogs never, the dogs never, they never complain. The people on the other hand, I'm joking. I'm joking. So, so at any rate, I, it, once I got a little experience under my belt flying animals, right, I decided to to uh, register with Angel Flight and and start flying medical missions. Where usually a typical mission for for us is going to be a cancer or burn patient going to uh, long term, you know, to to multiple doctor visits. An example is a is a young boy in Natchez who was was burned. I've probably flown him six or seven times to Atlanta, the Atlanta to excuse me to Augusta, Georgia. He was burned when he was one year when he was one year old. Terrible accident. He had a, a twin brother, and their 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 seven year old sister was trying to help their grandmother who was raising these kids, and put the kid in the bathtub in scalding water and burned him from his neck down. And it was bad enough that, of course, they immediately sent him to the burn center in Jackson, and they gave him they gave him a like a 20% chance of living, you know, a lot of, a lot of burn pay, severe burn patients usually die from infection. Yeah. So they gave him like a, like a 20% chance of living and about an 8% chance of getting to keep his legs. It was that bad. Oh uh, well, good, the good news is he, he survived and, and he, and he still has both legs. When I first flew him, he was, he was, uh, he was just a few months post burn and he was extremely, extremely uncomfortable and he couldn't talk, but he could cry. And you could tell that he hurt all the time, no matter what position he was in, he was in terrible pain, no matter what. So I've flown him, I've flown him to, to burn treatments at Augusta, Georgia, the JMS burn center in Augusta, Georgia is the largest, uh, most advanced burn center in the, in the country. So this kid's making visits with his grandmother from Natchez, Mississippi, which is you know close to new Orleans to Augusta, Georgia, which you can throw a rock and hit South Carolina to give you an idea of the distance. Wow. Long, long trip. So if you yeah. were to do that by car, I don't think his grandmother could have driven straight through without stopping and spending a night in a hotel. Holy. If she was going to fly commercial, she would either have to go to New Orleans or drive to Jackson, get on a plane and fly to Atlanta, get in oh a car gosh. and drive to Augusta. I mean, there's just no good way to do this. And this kid went every other week for the first three years of his life every oh other week God. for the first three years of life. so imagine the burden on this family yeah. to transport uh, it's just not possible i don't care how much money you have i don't care who you are you can't do that that's not possible that's where angel flight comes in and they have organized literally hundreds of missions literally hundreds of missions for this kid that's wow. a, that's a, an example of what they do cancer patients who are going to to you know treatments up to flown to 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 Houston many many times for for cancer patients and anyway that's what we do for, for brain that is awesome. wonderful wow. wonderful organization I can tell you it's the best run charity that I've ever been involved with 
a staff of nine people. They, they are, uh, there's nothing fancy about them. It is all about taking care of the patients. There is no billing mechanism at all. No one gets charged anything. It's 100% free. So, so Angel Flight Soars operates. They live and die on donations, corporate and private, many, mostly corporate, but they live and die on donations. And then again, the pilots carry the cost of the transportation, and that's how that operates. Um, and I am just so, uh, again, such a well-run organization. It's just amazing. I'm really honored to, honored to work with them. Well, thank you yeah. for doing that. Thank you for, for being so generous with your time and your, your experience. I mean, that's such a great way to put, uh, you know, a hobby to, to, yes, to use, you yes. know, right. right. That's wow. awesome. Wow. So I was going to, I was going to share with you what, and I appreciate it. Thank you for saying that. I'll share with you a real quick story about an epiphany. So I've been, uh, uh, again, I, 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 this is an association that I really, this is a group that I really, uh, I've just come, I've just come to love them and, and, and identify with, with Angel Flight a lot. I flew a family to, uh, an entire family to Dallas. And, and by this, by this time, I'm, I'm in a, a separate, I'm still president of this flying club that I mentioned, Wesley Flyers, but I've, I'm in a group at that point that owns a, a Beechcraft Bonanza, six seat, uh, single engine airplane. And I flew a family, a mother, a uh, daughter, excuse me, a mother, a son, her husband, a mother, a son, his, excuse me, his wife, he's the one having surgery. And then all their bags and everything to, to Dallas and for, for him to have surgery. And I, and I flew him back, back home uh, on another trip. A lot of times I will take a passenger with me. In fact, almost always I'll take, if I'm flying animals, I call them pup wranglers or dog wranglers or whatever. So I'll post on Facebook. I've taken, I've literally taken a hundred of my Facebook friends on flights with me. Everybody <laughs> enjoys that. And I enjoy having the company and it's nice to have the help, right? Well, in this particular case, I, I didn't have room to have a companion along with me. So I deadheaded back. I drop them off in Dallas and I'm flying back home. And it's a Friday evening. Not a day that I was normally off, but I took but I took off in the afternoon to make this flight for them. And I'm coming home by myself. I've been doing missions at that point for maybe three or four years, and uh, had a, you know I had a decent amount of experience, but but I guess maybe still fairly early in my career with with Angel Flight Source. And I'm flying back. It's at night. I got a tailwind. I'm making 200 knots. I mean, like everything's everything. It's just an extremely beautiful, peaceful night. Uh, basically over Longview, Texas, you know, really, really home, but on the way home. And it just dawned on me. I started thinking about all the things that had to happen in my life for me to be sitting in the seat where I was sitting, being able to do what I was do, do what I was doing. Like I, 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 I just had a great, a sense of gratitude. Like, how did I get so lucky? How did I, how, how come I'm the guy that's fortunate enough that, that I get to do this? You know, what, what did I, what did I do? And I thought back about all the things in my life, again, born on the military base and all the, in, in my interest in flying, the years that I had to work. And, and honestly, for most of my early years, I wouldn't have been able to afford to, to take flying lessons and fly airplanes. Uh, but later in later years, after many years of work, I, 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 I did have enough money to do that. What I didn't have was the time to do that. I was absorbed in my career and whatnot. So, uh, and, and I had to advance to a point where I'm self-employed now because I wasn't in my previous career. I, I managed printing plants, I told you. So I had to advance in my management skills to the point that I could own and operate my own business. That took decades to get to that point. Right. And until I was at that point, I really didn't have the, the, autonomy or the financial strength to do what I did. All those things had to happen. These, these things happened over years of, of my life. And early in my life, I, I didn't have, I will tell you that I, I, I'm, I'm sorry to say that I was very late to learn in my life just how valuable volunteerism is. Uh, to be able to, to be able to do things, to be in a position to be able to do things to help people is, uh, is an is it's just an awesome thing. And I, and I love that. So here I am sitting on my airplane, everything's, it was, a, it was a, a, almost a Zen experience of just like, how did I get here? How did, <laughs> how did this happen? And how am I the guy? It was like an epiphany. And I realized my airplane and my pilot's license that basically got to give me a mission field. Aww. And I was sitting in it. It, it, it. It's my airplane. And there is such a, a huge need for there is such a huge need for this. Uh, there aren't enough pilots to there aren't enough pilots to volunteer and to go around to do this. And so it, it's a valuable commodity. I find myself in a position in my life 
when I have something unique that I can offer and it was presented to me. So I, I you know, as far as, as far as, uh, you know, the mission field, I, I'm not someone who's predisposed to go on a mission trip to Guatemala or somewhere and build a house. I don't know anything about building houses. I wouldn't be helpful, you know, or yeah. a medical mission. Like what do I know about helping people with teeth or anything like that? I, I, I don't, I'm sorry. I don't, but you know what? I have an airplane and a pilot's license and I can carry, I can carry patients to their, uh, to their hospital visits and, and, and fill a, uh, need in society, you know, and yeah, so that was a pr- that was a cool experience. I, I mean, it 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 fully hit me the realization of of you know how far I'd come and what I was doing and the ability. I went home and shared that with my wa- my wife, and I'm proud to say she fully gets it as well. You could you know you can easily see that if this was a conflict in my household, like you're spending how much on an airplane, yeah, right, or you're right, going to spend yeah. it. You know, if it was a con, and I know guys like that who just who who their wives don't really want that if it had been a, so if she, any right she was fully in she said no jeff i think this is your this is your calling i think yeah. it's your calling. Well, it's not just a lot of yeah. resources it's, it's a, lot a lot of time, time. away yeah you know? because right. when you're, right. off, you're yeah. also away from home yeah. so i mean right. that's yeah. yeah that's yeah wow i mean it's really incredible that that you enjoy doing it so much that that it doesn't feel like a burden to you it feels like uh, something that you're grateful to be able to do. I mean, I, I, I don't know I that a lot yeah, of people yeah. ever even f- have the opportunity yeah. to, that they ever find something like that. So right, I, I just think right. that's incredible. Absolutely. Incredible. Thank, you. Thank you. And I do, I really do feel fortunate. I feel like I've been blessed and I, and I, I feel like I want to want to be able to share that. I've, I've, I'm in a different place in my life than I was before. I was running hard and not worried about, you know, that and other people so much when I was younger and it's, it's this is a different phase in my life and this is a it's a cool thing and it's been remarkably remarkably rewarding to me personally I mean it's just it's it's just an awesome thing it checks a lot of boxes you it know does. It does. personally it does. and just and for other people like it so that's a, it's a win-win right. yeah, I think it's very right. inspiring yeah. uh to our listeners and I I would not be surprised if if people check out a couple of the both of those organizations yeah. maybe if we so. have any pilots listening yeah that's right absolutely yeah know. pilotsandpaws.org and angelflightsoars.org s-o-a-r-s angelflightsoars.org wonderful organization yeah. awesome yeah and and um i know we probably ought to pivot back to, to yeah. peloton but um yeah. i am curious what your leaderboard name is then uh, angel flight jeff how about that there we go yeah yeah <laughs> Awesome. Yeah. So as I told you earlier on, it's, it's something that I truly identify with and I love the organization. I've got a, uh, my, my license plate on my vehicle is angel flight. <laughs> yeah. I, I, That's love fantastic. Them. I, tr- I truly love them. I, I, they're, they're just such an awesome organization. They care so much about their, their patients. They really do. It's amazing. Yeah. Well, I guess, um, uh, while we're back in the world of Peloton, before we wrap up, do you have any advice for people that are just now, uh, getting their bikes? I, I would say just dive in and do it. Uh, I, obviously, for somebody who's brand new, you don't want to overdo it. But you, there's, I don't think there's any better advice than just get on the bike and and, and try the rides. It's 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 a it's a it's a really cool thing. And I will tell you, I, I you know already, but I will just say, the Peloton's instructors, really all of them, are absolutely world class. I yeah, I used to be a spin instructor. I think I know what a, I think I know what a good fitness instructor <laughs> looks like. They are world class. Uh, and yeah, they're, they're, they're a great group. So I'm enjoying a lot and you know, something we didn't even touch on at all. Of course, I'm, of course I'm riding the bike, but I've gotten, I've gotten deep into yoga lately. I mean, I'm really, uh, oh man. And Anna Greenberg. So she's awesome. Uh, yeah, honestly, yoga is, yoga is probably going to overtake my number. I'm at, I, I did my 324th, uh, bike ride this morning. And I'm over 250 yoga classes. Whoa. And I, so yeah, yoga's yoga's going to overtake my bike ride. And, and I think that's okay. I will tell you that over my life, I told you, you know, I've done so much bike riding over my life. I probably have neglected, you know, core and arms and shoulders and upper body and all those things. So I'm focusing on that. I'm doing strength. I really was able to just buy some, some dumbbells. I, I, I did finally, finally get some, some Peloton uh, dumbbells. And so I'm doing their, their, the strength classes right now. But yoga has just been fantastic. My core, I just don't know if it's ever been any firmer than it is right now. And that, and, and I've got, I definitely have Anna Greenberg to thank for that. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm actually able to do some inverted, you know, a, a, a forearm just to stand balance, which uh, which is, wow. uh, stuns me. Yeah, stuns me that I'm able <laughs> to do that. 
but sure enough. Uh, so yeah, she's a great instructor. And I'm really That's enjoying awesome. that she as is. well. So yeah. It's good to be flexible. Some of those sets are small. <laughs> That's <laughs> right. That's right. Yeah. yeah so They so, are. You, you've got a cozy in those things. Yeah. So, yeah. So my partners, I have another group of partners that we just, uh, we just purchased a, 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 another plane. This one is a, uh, uh, Piper Malibu Mirage. We're pretty excited about that. It's uh, and as a matter of fact, it's in Kansas City getting an annual right now, and we're oh. going to go next Thursday and pick it up. So it's this is a nice one. It's pressurized, and uh, it's it's also a six seater, but a six seater with a lot of uh, a lot of room, but a big six seater and pressurized, no, was, so we can go higher, higher and faster. Yeah. I was thinking with your love for yoga, the Pilots for Pause works great because every time you land, downward dog. That's right. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, Tom. It's the only yoga <laughs> reference I can make. So, yep. And that's nice, right. Down nicely. Yeah. Down dog. So, so, I guess before we uh, let you go, where can people find you on social media if you would like to be found? So, uh, I guess I'm most active on on Facebook. Um, uh, Facebook.com Jeffrey Wall. That's J E F F E R Y Wall. Or if you look up if you look up Jeff Wall at my my. Um, wallpaper has a has an airplane that the piper malibu <laughs> mirage that i mentioned is there so uh that would be the right one um uh, i if i tell i will say this uh, if, if you don't mind about the nutrition uh, plan that i sure. that i talked about I, i'm absolutely happy to consult with anybody if they want to reach out to me on facebook i do i would need to talk to them on the phone we do a consult as a, as a coach we do a about a 20 or 25 minute consult with some health questions and then explain how that works or if the, or email me if you want. And that would be uh, Jefferson one at gmail.com. And that's, that's Jefferson with the numeral one at gmail.com. But if you want to reach out that way, and I, I, I mentioned the email just because I'm actually so close to, to 5,000 uh, Facebook uh, friends that probably, I mean, I'm like 49, 88 or something like that so yeah so right over yeah yeah it's probably gonna i was probably gonna hit five thousand soon you won't but I'll, I'll accept a friend request if somebody has an interest but but you could you could also follow me and uh and maybe send a private message and if, if you have an interest and we'll we can discuss from there awesome that's awesome well thank yeah. you so much for taking time out of what is a very busy day i'm yes, sure to yes. join us we we appreciate it and thank you for all that you do with your volunteer yes. activities that is absolutely just it's just stunning how awesome it is. So yeah. thank you for all that you do very much. Thank you for saying that. I really appreciate it. I very much enjoyed talking to you. Thank you. for like uh, Thank you for interviewing me. I appreciate that. So I guess that brings this episode to a close. What, pray tell, do you have in store for people next week? Next week, we're going to be talking to Stephanie Ward. Okay, yeah. so uh, until then, where can people find you? People can find me at facebook.com slash Crystal D. O'Keefe, and they can find me on Instagram, Twitter, the bike, and of course the tread at Clip Out Crystal. Awesome, and you can find me on Twitter at Roger Kubert or on Facebook at facebook.com slash Tom O'Keefe. You can find the show online, facebook.com slash the clip out. While you're there, like the page, join the group, wherever you're getting your podcast from. Be sure and subscribe so you never miss an episode. And of course, sign up for the newsletter at theclipout.com. So that's it for this one. Thanks for tuning in. And until next time, keep pedaling and running. Running.